Hello students, in this video I'm going to be going over graphing calculator worksheet 5. It's an introduction to how you graph on the graphing calculator. And what I want us to do is I want us to take the equation y equals 3x minus 5 and I want to graph it on the calculator. And the way you graph equations on the calculator is you press this y equals button in almost the upper left hand corner. So what I want you to do is I want you to press that button and the x button, the variable button, is this x, t, theta, n button that you see that's underneath mode. So what I want you to do is I want you to press y equals and then enter the equation y equals 3x minus 5. You don't have to type in the y, you just type in the number 3 followed by the x button and then the subtraction button and then 5. I want you to enter this into your calculator so that it looks like this. Now, when you do that, you want to graph that line. And the way you graph is you press the graph button on the calculator. But you have to be careful because you want to tell your calculator the, the dimensions that you want it to use in order to graph. What I want to do is I want to take a graph Remember, the x-axis is the horizontal axis, the y-axis is the vertical axis. And what I want to do is I want to graph it from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis. That's known as the standard viewing window. This negative 10 on the x-axis is the x-min. This positive 10 is the x-max. This negative 10 on the y-axis is the y-min, and this positive 10 on the y-axis is the y-max. So what I want to do is I want to graph this in the standard viewing window. The way I do that is I press the zoom button, and when you press the zoom button, this is what your calculator should look like, and you want to go down to number 6 for zoom standard. So from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis, negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis is, is known as the standard viewing window. So I want you to go to number 6 and then take a picture of the graph and enter it in this box on your worksheet. So this is what your calculator should look like. and. If you notice, this particular graph crosses the y-axis at negative 5, and it looks like it crosses the x-axis in between positive 1 and positive 2. And we're going to have to find where it crosses the x-axis, where it crosses the y-axis in future problems. So now what I would like you to do is I want you to try to graph this equation, y equals x squared minus 10x plus 7. This is going to be a parabola because the x is squared. So what I want you to do is press the y equals button, clear out the other equation, and type in this equation. Once again, you want to use that x button, and then to get the squared, you're going to press the x squared button on your calculator. So type in x and then hit the x squared button, and then the rest of the equation. And what I want to do is I want to first graph it in the standard viewing window and put that picture in this box on the worksheet. So remember, the standard viewing window, we press zoom, and then we go down to number six, which is zoom standard. So take a minute and graph that parabola and put the picture in the box. And this is what your calculator should look like. Remember the standard viewing window goes from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis and from negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis. But if you notice, you don't see the entire parabola. Remember, the parabola uh, is this U-shaped curve, and it looks like you're missing this bottom portion of the parabola. So what I want to do in Part B is I want us to adjust the viewing window 
to be able to see the vertex. The vertex of a parabola is either the very low point or the very high point of the graph. So it looks like the vertex is kind of somewhere down here beneath the screen of the calculator. Now what you're going to have to do is this. You're going to have to remember that the x min is the left portion of the graph. The x max is the right portion of the graph. The y min is the bottom and the y max is the top. So since our vertex is kind of underneath the screen, we're going to have to adjust the y min value. Right now, our graph goes as low as negative 10, and we're going to have to go even lower to see that vertex. And here's your key. If you're having trouble viewing the bottom and the top of the graph, you have to adjust the y values. If you're having trouble seeing the left and the right of the graph, you have to adjust the x values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the window button on the calculator. And right now my viewing window goes from negative 10 to positive 10 for the x and negative 10 to positive 10 on the y. And what I want to do is I want to move the cursor over the y min and I want to change that negative 10 to an even smaller number. Let's say I want to change it to negative 20. So change the y min to negative 20 on your calculator by simply typing over the negative 10 and changing it to negative 20. And then what I want you to do is not go and press zoom 6 to zoom standard because that will go back to, to negative 10 for the y min. When you manually change the viewing window and you want to graph that new viewing window, you press the graph button. So press the graph button, and this is what your new graph should look like. And put that picture in that box on the screen. Now I notice the direction said find the vertex of the parabola, and now I see the vertex, this low point. When you do these questions, the directions are going to be pretty specific as far as what it is you're being asked, asked to do. And you're going to be asked to supply the viewing window that you used. So we went from negative 10 to positive 10 for our x min and our x max. We changed the y min to negative 20, but we kept the y max as 10. And on tests and quizzes, what you're going to have to do is supply this viewing window. Now, on tests and quizzes, because you're taking the tests and quizzes right now on paper, what you're going to have to then do is not put your picture in the box because you won't be using your calculator uh, and your iPad for a test. You'll instead have to then make a sketch of what your graph looks like. So this is what I would do, and this is what you're going to have to do on tests and quizzes. Just make a quick sketch of what your graph looks like. Now the directions go on and it says reset the viewing window back to the standard view. So I'll do that now by going to zoom and then going to number six. So this is what my graph looks like. The directions don't ask us to draw that again because we already have that up top here. And now what we're going to have to do is find some values. And the way you find values on the calculator is you're going to use the table feature of the calculator. If you notice, above the graph button in blue is where it says table. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use our table to get some values. Now before you do that, what you're going to have to do is this. You're going to have to go to second and then window. Because what you're going to have to do first is go to table set. So go second 
and window for table sets. And this is what you want your values to be. I want you to start your table at zero, make this triangle table one. So I want you to enter in table set, so second and window, type in zero for table start, and then for this triangle table, and I'll show you what that does in a second, make that one. And then what I want you to do is go to second and graph to go to the actual table of the calculator. And this is what it should look like. Okay, when you go to second and then graph, your table should look like this. On the older calculator, your graph only goes down to number six, but what you can do is you can press the down arrow button to get all the way down to nine, because here's what the question says. Find the value of y when x is nine. So what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down to nine, and the value of y when x is nine is negative two. So we're gonna write negative two on that line. Okay, our next question. Find the values of x when y is 18. So now I'm gonna look in this y column, I'm gonna look for the number 18. And I don't see, I don't see 18 there just yet. But if you notice, if you read your table from the middle up, it goes from negative 18 to negative 17 to negative 14, all the way up to positive seven. The numbers are getting bigger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the up arrow button while the cursor is in the X column. And it looks like when I go past zero, I see Y is 18. And the question says, what's the values of X? Well, X is negative one when Y is 18. But if I read the table from the middle going downward, the numbers are also getting bigger from negative 18 to negative 17 to negative 14 to negative nine. So if I press the down arrow button, I can scroll down a little bit and I see that when X is 11, Y is also 18. So here's my answer. The values of X when Y is 18 are negative one and 11. Now this next one, it says, find the value of Y when X is 10.2. So what I'm gonna do is, I wanna see 10.2 in the X column. But you notice there's no decimals in that X column. That's because when we went to our table setup, when we did second and window, we told our table to start at zero, but we made this triangle table one. That means my table is gonna go up by ones, from one to two to three to four. Well, what I can do is I can change these values. I can go to second and window for table set, what I can do is I could tell my table to start at 10, and then I could change this triangle table to 0 0.1. That's what I want you to do. I want you to start your table at 10, and then change your triangle table, it's called delta table, to 0.1. Now go to second and then graph for your table. And if you notice when you do that, second and graph for your table, your table will start off at 10 and go up by 0.1. So here the question says, what's the value of Y when X is 10.2? I look when X is 10.2 and the value of Y is 9.04.